Hi guys, and welcome to another edition of Zuvo's SCA Talk and Tea. Today's conversation are what are search operators and how are they helpful? Search operators are a really old school method of research, uh, researching you know, search engines under competition that I think that a lot of people don't take advantage of. They rely on softwares, but I, de I definitely think search operators are very important. I use them heavily in my research and day to day. So we're gonna walk through what they are and how they're important. But of course, we're going to introduce the talk of uh, the the tea because this is Zupo's SEO talk and tea, right? So we have a tea station, Kimun Black Tea. Uh, it's also in Chinese called Hong Cha, which means red tea. So I don't know why black tea is translated to black tea when in Chinese it's red tea, but I'm not here to debate that. That's a whole another video that I have known I know nothing about. But this is a black tea that I bought I think like four or five years ago, back when I used to make a lot of boba. Um, in my house, and I used to work for different boba shops, and I really liked this black tea. But let's go ahead and let, let's get brewing and talking about what a search operator is and how it's helpful. So what a search operator is, is there are searches you can do on Google search that manipulate the search engine results that kind of do a finer tuned filter down version of a search. So it's not something that's manipulative or it's not something that it's not against the rules. It actually is something that Google publicly publishes that you can use. The best example I can use is when you were in uh, elementary school or high school, sometimes in the library you can use different filters uh, when you're searching for a book, and that, and that would return certain levels of books. So the, the most uh, common version of a search operator that you've probably used is, hey, can you filter the results down to the last year? That's a really common one a lot of people will use, or like the time variation. And those, that's one that you don't even really need to use a search operator, it's a search setting that you could just you know use under the Google search bar. But what I'm specifically talking about is there are things you can type into Google that specifically tell it what to look for. So the most common one I use today is the site search operator. The site search operator is, uh, let's just use my own website as an example. If you want to do a site search operator of my site, uh, you would just put site, S-I-T-E, colon, so two dots, zupo.co, Z-U-P dot C-O, and don't put a space between the colon and the domain. I'm not sure if it matters, but I'm I'm pretty sure it does. So don't put a space, put again, S-I-T-E colon Z-U-P-O dot C-O, which is my website. You can put whatever website the heck you want, it doesn't really matter, but just put the domain after. What that site search operator says is I only want to see pages that Google has indexed of this website. Therefore, on a much more basic level, it just means please only return results from this website, right? And why that's valuable is it's not as valuable, I guess, for your own site, but it's very valuable when you're looking doing it for your own site compared to your competitors. What I often like to do is like to see how many pages our competitors have that are indexed by Google and how many pages we have. That generally gives me a good idea of the site library that we have and site thoroughness we have in terms of content compared to our competitors. So Another example of a search operator that I also like to use is Intitle. So it's I-N-T-I-T-L-E, Intitle, all one word. Intitle, colon, whatever word you want. So let's use the Zupo example again. Let's say I did site, S-I-T-E, colon, Zupo.co. That tells Google only return pages that um, are on Zupo.co that you have indexed. And then second, I put Intitle, colon, uh, let's just put SEO. That would tell Google, of this website, Zupo.co, please return all the pages that have the word SEO in its title. Therefore, you could restrict to the site search to say, okay, I'm looking at only this site, but I only want to see the pages that are devoted to SEO. And so the reason why that's important then is because then you can like you can find all the pages re um, revolving this topic, or you can kind of see, like, you can do take it any other way, but in that specific case, I could just be able to see, what, hey, you know this is a Zupo website, what are all the SEO pages and how many do they have? So those are two common site search operators, and as you probably have guessed while I was explaining that, you can use two together. They don't need to be one by one. So in that case, the site search operator with Zupo.co and the in-title search operator were used in tandem. And you can use, I believe, as many as you'd like. I've, I have search operators that have, like, five put together. Right, so what I would, what I like to do with these, is these are great ways to investigate um, real quickly your competitors and their content profiles and your own site on the content profile. Because what I talk about a lot about in these videos is, you know, taking your research and your strategies into niches or specific products and services. I I always mention this in these videos. Your business probably sells more than one product. That means you have multiple product pages, multiple services. That means you have multiple keyword groups you're trying to optimize for. 
when you are competing with other people, sometimes your competitors who are working for certain uh, products also have their own var variety of products that don't really match the ones you're trying to sell. So maybe you're only competing down to one product. Right? In that case, what you would could use with the exact site search operator and those in title search operators, hey, let's return my website. How many pages do we have devoted to this topic and how many does our competitor? If they have 10 and we have one, we obviously are lacking. We need to kind of build up our own content library for that specific keyword group. Right? So there's a lot of different site search operators. Uh, the, the one I like to use the most, I believe, is from Moz. Uh, Dr. Pete, I've actually met Dr. Pete at MozCon. He's a great guy. Uh, I've, I've seen him speak. I've actually tweeted back and forth with him. He's been very helpful. Um, and also, uh, he's a big player at MozCon. Uh, he does a great job on one of his posts about listing all the site search operators you can use. I would reference that and kind of test it out myself. I generally have my go-to four or five site search operators I use, but it really depends on the type of research you're doing and the kind of um, you know sites you're looking at. But site search operators help circumvent the need for like really sophisticated softwares. You're, you're using Google's exact search engine. You can see what they have indexed, and therefore you can kind of just use a Google search bar as a really awesome research tool. And like I said, I use this very heavily in my own research with my own clients. So it is, it is not like a shortcut or a, a weaker version. I definitely use it very heavily, and I really suggest it for other people. So again, I've only gone through two site search operators. There's many other ones that include like in text or in URL, but I would really read the Dr. Pete post. I believe Ahrefs also has another post. I kind of use both of them. Read both of them and you'll get a really thorough understanding of you know um, all the search, search operators and how you can use them. But I hope you guys you know are able to use that. I hope you guys found this video uh, valuable. If you liked what you saw, please like and subscribe. I'm gonna pour this black tea out. Whenever I pour this black tea, it makes me just want boba. But um, that's beside the point. Uh, I'm going to drink this black tea now, guys, and I hope to see you guys again soon. Thanks.